Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we are talking about the rectangular hyperbola. So, last lesson, uh, well last couple of lessons we've talked about the parabola and uh, working out the tangents to the parabola. And the hyperbola are very, very similar indeed in terms of the, the sort of generic nature of it and the fact that you can find a tangent normal to it. So the learning objective is to understand what is meant by a rectangular hyperbola and how to work out the tangent to it. So the last couple of le lessons we've focused on something known as the parabola. In this lesson we'll talk about something called the rectang rectangular hyperbola and you'll meet these sort of curves in core 1 um, and you know onwards. Uh, but you'll never hear them called the rectangular hyperbola probably until core 4. So uh, a rectangular hyperbola is a decay graph so as x gets larger and larger y gets smaller and smaller. So there you go that's what it looks like there. Um, it's just starts high and, and comes in and low but never ever hits zero so uh, the asymptotes here are the x and y axis. It has the following parametric equations and I said in the last episode that we will deal with parametrics but in core 4 and just think of them as working in T uh, at the moment. Don't worry about them. So x equals CT, y equals C over T. So they're the generic points, um, well they're the generic equations of the hyperbola. So therefore the Cartesian equation is um, uh, xy equals c squared because if you times them together the t's cancel and you just end up with c squared. Cartesian is the world that we work in, y equals 4x plus 3. It's where x and y's appear in the same equation with uh, a constant. That That's literally what a Cartesian equation is. Uh, and parametric is where you have y in terms of t. That's all the difference is, and that's all you need, though, for now. The general point on a rectangular hyperbola is ct, c over t. So there you go, that, that comes from the parametric equations. So just like parabolas and any other curve, we can find tangents and normals to the rectangular hyperbola. So xy equals c squared. Remember, uh, if we're finding a tangent, uh, we need to get y on its own. So we write it like that. But then if you remember, we need to differentiate, so we're going to need that x in power form. So we write it like that. y will c squared, x to the minus 1. Power to the front, not 1 off the power. Remember that c squared is just a constant, so you don't need to do anything with the power of that. And it's certainly not a product rule or, or anything. We are focusing purely on the x do y by dx equals minus c squared x to the minus 2. And remember, c is a constant, just as I've said. Uh, writing that back in, you know, normal form, it's minus c squared over x squared. Remember that uh, our generic x is ct, so you put that in there. Square everybody in the bracket, and you get that. And we've got c squared on the top, c squared on the bottom, so there you go, and you're just left with minus 1 over t squared, and that is the generic gradient for any tangent to any hyperbola. y minus b equals mx minus a. Here I'm going to times throw by t squared, just to get rid of the fractions, and you get that. Very careful with this negative sign here, do not forget about them and just change everybody's sign in the brackets. And you get that. Making everybody positive, the generic tangent to a hyperbola is t squared y plus x equals 2ct. So here's an um, example, just found this straight away on an FP1 paper. Uh, can't remember the year, but the point P where x equals 2 lies on the rectangular hyperbola h with the equation x y equals 8 find the tangent of uh, sorry the equation of the tangent t at the point p so x y equals 8 but we need y on its own 8 over x write that in power form please and you get that power to the front not one off the power and you get that write it back in a form that you like to look at minus 8 over x squared remember though 
uh, that our x here is 2. So we end up with that. Do y by dx equals minus 8 over 4. So do y by dx must equal minus 2. So our gradient at the point 2 is minus 2. y minus b equals mx minus a. Expand. Tidy up. Sorry, uh, if you're wondering where that minus 4 came from, it's just animated in the wrong order. Uh, when x equals 2, y equals 4, because we'll just put back through this. Uh, what do you times 2 by to get 8? That's going to be 4. Tidy up and make it positive, and you get y plus 2x equals 8. And that is the equation of the tangent t at the point p. Probably a bit of an easier example. You would generally get... Um, generic ones but uh, just remember uh, the generic uh, equation to the tangent I forgot what I was talking about there the generic equation of the tangent which is t squared y plus x equals 2 ct and that is pretty much that with rectangular hyperbola uh, it is probably one of the harder topics on FP1 uh, you can get some pretty nasty questions on them um, but this is the basic knowledge that you need to know uh, and obviously hopefully you found it helpful so make sure you leave a like uh, down below if you did because I need to know that the lessons are a good quality I know I say it every lesson but make sure you do uh, any questions that you do have leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them uh, there's plenty of questions on FP1 papers uh, I'd go to physicsandmathstutor.com to find those uh, edXL I'm doing uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and that your A-levels are going very, very well indeed. And I'll see you in a couple of days where we'll be moving away from coordinate systems and moving towards numerical methods.